Hi everyone, welcome to TRIG. I'm your instructor, Stacy Reagan. That's me up here in the corner that you can see. I'm going to take you on a tour through your course so that you'll understand how things work. First of all, when your course opens, the first thing that you will see is the course information page. It will have a link to announcements on it, the accessibility statement, and that means that should you need uh, assistive technology, these websites will tell you uh, about the assistance that you can get for those um, pieces of technology. You will have your syllabus. Please make sure that you read that syllabus. It actually has um, the course outline on it. It has the pacing guide on it. It tells you the due dates. This course starts right away. You cannot wait until January 15th, which is the last day you can take the syllabus quiz, which is here. Um, Things will start right away and you will accumulate zeros. There's also an attendance policy. Make sure that you read about that um, because I do adhere to that attendance policy. I have to because of the institutional guidelines. You also have a syllabus quiz. Once you take the syllabus quiz, the sections that I have available to you will open up over here on the side. I've taken the syllabus quiz, so that's why I can see Unit 1 trig functions over here. Um, one thing that I'm doing this semester is I'm using a monitoring tool for your tests and quizzes. So I have here the Respondus Quick Start Guide to help you um, learn how that will work. You will want to take this practice quiz with the Respondus so that you can see what the monitoring looks like and make sure that you have the proper equipment. If you do not complete the Respondus practice quiz, your first quiz and your first test will not open for you. So you have to complete that before um, those things open for you. I do have an attendance block here to help you keep up with your attendance. Um, you can log into a VSO and see that because I have to um, take your attendance in WebAdvisor. But I will also try to do it here so that you can see exactly what assignment goes with which attendance because attendance is based on your assignments and you can see here that I have every assignment listed and um, I will take attendance for each of those. Um, your online textbook is here. We are using open source materials for this class this time so you do not have to purchase a textbook. It is available to you online. You can purchase it in the bookstore if you want to or you can purchase it online if you want to. But I do have the PDF version here. Um, on the online link. There's also the online version of the textbook that's there. It's actually pretty good. Um, that's probably something that you're going to want to use. It has the contents is linked to every section and every time there's an example problem, let's just pull one up so you can see, it actually links to it and shows you how to work the problem. So let's say you were doing the identities and we went to that section in the textbook. Let's say we went here. It's going to link you to it and it's also going to have the examples with a link that when you open it, it will show you how to do that. Let's find the examples. So right here, here's one, an example that they have. And when you click on it, it shows you the solution and how to fix it. So it's actually pretty good. It also has in the unit exercises at the end of each section. Go down to it and show you if you get to the um, exercises at the end. Here are the section exercises and it actually shows the solution to each section exercise. So even though I have put those solutions in your course in each section, I'll show you where those are. You might actually want to use the online version. In each section, I have a part that says um, book homework solutions. I've put a word copy of the solutions and a screen readable version there in case you are using assistive technology. So those are available to you, but like I said, the online version may be better for you to use. Let's see what else is here that you need. Um, we will have a virtual classroom. It is optional. Um, I will be available during my office hours. You just have to let me know ahead of time so that I know to go into the virtual classroom. I can also be available on Tuesday evenings at 7. 
and on Sundays at 4 before um, each test you might have, which I believe most of those are due on Mondays. You just have to let me know ahead of time. The syllabus outlines that. Uh, I need to know 24 hours in advance, so you need to make sure that you have let me know that you would like to have some instruction in the virtual classroom, and I'm happy to do that. You might want to click on the link ahead of time just to make sure that your computer is ready for it. We do um, use a lot of Microsoft products. It is available free to you, and here's the link for that. You also have free online tutoring. It's available here, and you have tutoring on both campuses. Now, once you do take the syllabus quiz, the next section will open for you, and all sections look basically the same. Noon is the due time for all of your assignments. I do not accept assignments late. That's also detailed in the syllabus. I try to put your textbook in every block that you have, and you'll see more. There are five units and then the final exam unit, and they will open up as I finish those, so they'll be down the side in the table of contents. Your textbook is there. There are the book PowerPoints that are there for some of you who like to use PowerPoints, the homework solutions, the objectives that you will meet for each unit, and then it gets down to the assignments. Notice this red lockbox. That means that there is something that you have to do before each thing will be accessible to you. So this one, when I hover over it, it tells me that this is not available to me until I complete the lesson. And each lesson will have um, a page of reading that you might need to do, some videos you may need to watch. And then the last page of the lesson, let's see, let's go back to the front page of the lesson. So that you can see that. I want you to see the front page of it. So if I go to this front page of this lesson, it gives you some reading. It tells you where it's at in the book, tells you where it is online. It gives you videos that you need to watch. Um, some terms you might need to be responsible for. It tells you what examples you need to look at, where you need to work in the book. And then every lesson on the next page has a confirmation page. And if you get to that page and you select that you completed it, it automatically populates 100 for the lesson in the grade book. So once you do those lessons, um, you will get a grade for it. If you don't do the lesson, you get a zero for it. Also, if you don't do the lesson, your homework and your quizzes will not open for you. So the previous lesson will allow your homework to open. Your homework, for the most part, is based in My Open Math. It is also free, and on the course information page, it tells you how to access that. It is a separate homework site. It is here, accessing the online homework site. I'm going to take you to the site just so you can see it, see what it looks like. Um, you will need to put yourself in a password and a username. I use the one that I have for Caldwell just to make it easier. But this is your course, your ho online homework. We'll have your homework here. Basically, um, you will have various numbers of problems. You will have unlimited attempts. You can always also, I've set these so that you can print them if you want to, and um, that way you can um, take these to academic support if you need to. Once the uh, due date has passed, this will open up and show you the answer so that you can review it if you need to. So let's go back to your course, make sure there's nothing else that you need to see. Um, so you will have quizzes homeworks, tests, and labs. So there's a homework. It takes you to the My Open Math. Another lesson, a quiz. Notice it has a lock on it. That means that if you don't complete this lesson, you can't access the quiz. Most of the quizzes are multiple choice, but when you click on it, it will tell you what the particular quiz is about. It won't start the quiz. But it, and see, look, it won't let me click on it because I haven't completed this lesson up here. So I have to do the lesson before I can see it. Um, another homework based on the previous lesson. And then a lab. And I'm going to change my role back to instructor so I can show you what the labs look like. So 
So the labs are usually work that you have to do on paper so that I can correct anything that you may be doing incorrectly. It will be a, usually a Word document. Um, so you will open that up. In this first one, I have shown you a way that you can turn your document into PDF because I need PDF documents. So however you can turn it into one PDF document, you need to do that. There are two versions of this lab here. This one is a screen reader version. So if you're using a screen reader, you would want to click on that one. If you aren't, you would want to click on the Word document. It will open up and then you will have your problems that you would do. You would work them on a piece of paper. You would scan it or take a picture of it, turn it into a PDF, and then you would submit it in that assignment link that's there for you. So that's the kind of things that you will do for labs. Then you will have um, tests. Most of your tests will have um, some multiple choice, maybe some uh, written things that you have to do, and you'll have to submit those to me as a PDF. Um, some things you actually have to type in a box, so I have to give you more time on those because you do have to type those things in a box. Um, you don't have to type, you know, math symbols. You can just tell me the name for the math symbol. So notice here's test one. I tell you what lesson it covers through. I tell you what kind it is. Um, if you click on it, it tells you the time that you have for it. This test won't open for you until you've completed the Respondus Practice Quiz because it will be monitored. You know, you can use your notes and things that you've taken for class, but you cannot open another browser. You cannot use your phone to look things up on another website. So you need to be prepared to take these classes, these tests. This one actually, and I'll change some of the questions. I just want you to see what it looks like. Um, we'll have some boxes that you have to type answers in. So you will be, you know, doing the work on your paper and then you will type it in. So like, let's say the answer was pi over 2. If you just wrote out the word pi and then the word over and then a 2, that would be sufficient for that. You don't have to type the math symbols. Let's see, let me log back in there so that I can show you anything else. I think that's everything that you need. Let's go back over to my courses. I think that's everything in that section that you need to look at. So that's how your course is actually going to work. Um, there are some different things um, available to you this time. If you've taken classes here before, you notice that our site looks a little different. We actually don't have Moodle. We actually have Blackboard Open LMS, um, but it was it used to be Moodle and it was bought by Blackboard. So for now, we're still calling it um, Moodle. But you have, you used to have these things down the side with faculty information and that kind of stuff in it and where you could send emails. That is now here under course dashboard. You have a course dashboard just like I do. Um, your grade book is located there. Your quick mail is located there. Your faculty information about me is located there. So everything's still there. It's just in a different spot now. If you click on my courses, it's going to show all the courses that you have. So things just look a little different, but they're all still there. The main difference is your course is not on one whole page now. You have access to it in a table of contents. So if you have questions, please contact me. I'll put that up for you again. My contact information is in your syllabus, but um, you can also contact me by going to your course dashboard. Your course dashboard will tell you my faculty information. So it's here. I am on both campuses. So you can get me um, on the Watauga campus. You can get me for now until they move us in room 106. On the Hudson campus, you can get me in E315. The phone number that I have listed there is the same for both campuses. So if you call my phone number or you send me an email, you're going to reach me in bo on both campuses. So let me know if I can help you with anything. I really want to make sure that you're successful in this course.